The Suicide Squad is finally here, and writer-director James Gunn promised before the movie premiered that there would be a lot of blood and carnage, and he delivered. And now that I've seen the movie, I thought that it would be fun to do a nice little tier list for the best deaths in The Suicide Squad. So if you haven't seen Suicide Squad, uh, spoilers obviously, because we're going to be talking about all of the deaths in the movie. Alright, starting it off in the D tier of deaths, the worst death of the movie, in my opinion, goes to Javelin. <laughs> Javelin kind of gets shot in the torso region in the opening massacre of the movie, and it's not a particularly standout death, he kind of just gets shot, and that's it. And so in a movie full of pretty great, unique, and fun deaths, Javelin's was the least memorable to me, and so he goes in the D tier. And by that same logic, I gotta put TDK here. <laughs> Now, TDK has a slightly more exciting death. His detached arms are shot separately from his body, and we see him writhe around in pain. So I guess technically, uh, yeah, it's more entertaining and it's more memorable, but by similar logic to Javelin. They could have done more with this death, especially TDK. He's got such a fun power for James Gunn to play with here. I was expecting a little more, so TDK is also in this D tier. All right, moving on to the C tier of deaths. Starting it off with the first death of the movie, I got Blackguard here. Oh, now, I actually think that this is a great way to start the movie. It's so just in your face. Yeah, just having Pete Davidson's face blown off right at the start of this movie, it was a great way to start it off, set the tone, and yeah, it's C-tier death for me. Also in the C-tier for me, a bookend for this opening scene, Savant. Ah! Now, Savant sees his entire team basically wiped off the face of the earth, and he does the very reasonable thing of trying to get the hell out of there. And it's actually Amanda Waller who flips the switch and detonates the implanted bomb in the back of his neck that explodes Savant's head, and we kind of get the Blackguard Savant head explosions to book in this opening scene. Uh, I thought it was a pretty decent way to start this movie, so Savant, see to your death. I'm also putting Mon Gal in the C tier. Now, her jumping up, grabbing a helicopter, and taking it down with her bare hands was a pretty cool moment, but due to the fact that we don't actually really get to see the carnage from her death, I gotta put her in the C tier here, but don't you worry, we will talk about the fallout from that later on in this list. Now, here we are in the B tier, and we're really ratcheting up the death quality in the B tier, we're starting to get into real fan favorites and just epic huge moments in the movie. So yeah, I'm putting Milton in the B tier. <laughs> now if we're actually just grading the quality of the actual death, yeah, he's, he's a D tier death. But in terms of setup and payoff to his death and the jokes that come after it, he's definitely a B tier death in this movie. He killed Milton! Milton was still with us? Who's Milton? What? I don't remember any Milton. Fuck! And the setup really is there. In that slow motion rain ensemble shot where they're all walking toward the camera, Milton's in that shot. James Gunn set this joke up really, really well, and it really worked for me. So for that, I gotta put Milton in B tier. Also in the B tier, I'm putting Silvio Luna. Defeat the beast. <laughs> I actually really like Silvio's death in this movie. In the middle of this movie, Harley Quinn gets her own sort of side adventure where she strikes up a relationship with Silvio Luna, who's kind of set up to be the film's main villain. And then, due to, you know, toxic breakup, she decides to just shoot him right in the chest, just like that. The unexpected nature and the just out of nowhereness of it all it really shocked me. It was one of the few times in the movie that I was actually shocked at how abrupt a character died. And so for that reason, I gotta put Silvio Luna in the B tier. All right, now we got the A tier and the S tier left. And what separates A tier from S tier? I mean, I decided to title this Best Deaths, but how do you quantify best? Is it the most gruesome, the most unique, the most emotionally resonant or satisfying? How do I separate A from S? And so for me, I decided A tier is the more emotional deaths of the movie. And so for that reason, I gotta put my boy Rick Flagg in the A tier. Yes, he is just stabbed in the heart, but it's after a brutal fight with Peacemaker, and it's the most emotional death in the movie, I would say. 
Rick Flagg is a good guy and he's trying to do the right thing and unfortunately that puts him up against the literal human brick wall of John Cena. To add a little bit of extra full circleness to Rick Flagg's storyline, he stabbed in the heart, we get the internal shot of the stab to the heart. And if you'll remember in the first Suicide Squad, or better yet, if you don't remember, and I have to remind you now, uh, Rick Flagg was in a relationship with Dr. June Moon in the first movie, and she gets possessed by the Enchantress. And the way that he can get June Moon back from the Enchantress is Harley Quinn cuts out the Enchantress's heart, and Rick Flagg crushes it. So it's a nice full circle moment for Rick Flagg, I guess, and it leads to his death, which is a solid A-tier death. Also in the A-tier for me is... Polka Dot Man. I'm a motherfucking stupid! Polka Dot Man was maybe my favorite character of the movie next to King Shark. I loved the recurring joke of him envisioning everyone as his mother and using his Polka Dot powers to kill his mother. Uh, it was great. And seeing him at the end of the movie see Starro as a giant version of his mother, get to use his powers to take out Starro's leg, and then cheer in the fact that he is a superhero and then get brutally crushed by Starro's other leg. Uh, pretty great. Uh, I think that's really the only way this character was going to see the end of this movie. So to get to go out in that way was sort of the best he could possibly hope for and I enjoyed it. A tier death. All right, now we're at the top row of the tier. The S tier, the best of the best deaths in the movie. How do I quantify that? Well, clearly I quantified it with uh, kind of the most gruesome and unique and gory deaths of the movie. And so, starting off the S tier, I've got The Thinker. He gets pulled in by Starro, a giant starfish, gets pulled apart like a starfish, and then thrown and splattered against a wall. It's gruesome, it's gory, it's crazy, it's S tier. But really, the cream of the crop for me. The best of the best. The top of the S tier, if you will, even over The Thinker is my boy, Captain Boomerang. Now, Captain Boomerang is the top death of this movie for me for multiple reasons. The death itself is actually very, very gruesome. When Mongol takes down the helicopter, he gets absolutely skewered by different sorts of trees and branches and whatever else shrapnel from the blast. Helicopter's behind him, it explodes, rotor goes spinning, he gets absolutely massacred in this thing. It's probably the most violent death of the movie. And so for that reason, it definitely solidifies itself as the top of the S tier. But also, it's got even more working for it. Pete Davidson and Michael Rooker dying in the start of this movie, along with Nathan Fillion and Mon Gao. Sure, those were deaths that really set the tone of an entire team dying, but nothing really says no one is safe in this movie more than Captain Boomerang, one of the core members of the first movie and just the Suicide Squad comics in general. He's even one of the four main characters that you can play as in the upcoming Suicide Squad game by Rocksteady. This is a guy who is an elite royalty member of the squad and to have him just brutally murdered, just so nonchalantly at the start of this movie, it perfectly sets the tone of this movie James Gunn knew what he was doing, killing off Captain Boomerang in this way, and for that reason, he makes it to the top of my list. Captain Boomerang, S-tier death, no questions for me. But I'm sure you have a lot of disagreements with my list, so let me know in the comments below how you would rank and stack up the deaths in the Suicide Squad. What were your favorites? What were your least favorites? What could have been better? What couldn't have possibly been better? Because it was so great. I want to hear it from you in the comments. Like this video if you liked my list. Like this video if you didn't like my list. I don't even care. I just want the likes. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. That does it for me in this video, but I'll see you in the future.